Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We bless you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. to you. <laughs> um, let me know if y'all can hear everything and bring it started here. I bless you, Jesus. Can you pray with me while you're at home? Lord, we thank you for today. God, we thank you for what today represents in your kingdom. Lord, I thank you for your resurrection. I thank you for the cross. I thank you for the blood that you have shed for us, oh God. I thank you for your love for us, Jesus. I give you all the glory and the honor, O oh Father. We bless you here today, God. And I know that you are awesome and you are wonderful. And I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. God, I give you the glory today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Welcome to our Easter service broadcast, our Resurrection Sunday. I hope that you are doing well and are feeling the presence of God this morning. I, uh, pardon me, my tie got messed up. <laughs> um, for those of you who are joining us via YouTube on our first service on YouTube, welcome. Our Facebook Live, God bless you. I'm so glad you're here with us today. Um, first, um, I want to read something to you. Um, Pastor, uh, told me to wish everyone a happy Easter. He said that he and his family are so very appreciative of all of your prayer and the fasting that you have been doing and as a church that we have been doing. He's very grateful. I did get to see him for a couple minutes um, a couple days ago. He is he's doing as well as he can right now. Um, he's on the mend. I believe God is healing him. And before we start, we're going to pray again for our pastor together. Um, he also wanted me to thank you not only for your, uh, your prayers and your fasting, <clears throat> but your faithfulness to our church services here online and also your faithfulness in giving. We appreciate that so that the church can continue to pay what we need to pay. We are so blessed to have a church who is a giving church. And I am praying that God blesses you according to his word. He said that he would rebuke the devourer for your sake. And I know that he is a God who keeps his promises. So before we go into worship, if you would join with me wherever you are, you can lift your hands, you can bow your head. We are going to pray and we're going to invite God to be here with us today. I know he's always with us. 
where two or three are gathered together, God is always in the midst. So Lord, we invite you here into this service today. Lord, we invite your presence here to be among us. Lord, I thank you for every person who's joined us online. And I ask, Lord, that you would move in their houses, God, and show them what the resurrection is truly about. And I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you did rise again and you conquered death for us, oh God. You gave the victory over death and the grave. In Jesus' name, I bless you and I thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I was buried beneath my shame. Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my tomb till I met you. Yes. I was breathing but not alive All my failures I tried to hide It was my tomb Jesus till I met you If you know it's he was you called Buried beneath my shame Oh, who could carry that kind of weight It was my tomb hey. Till I met you Thank you, Lord I was breathing but not Alive, oh yeah. All my failures I tried to hide. It was my tomb, Jesus, till I met you. You called my name, and I ran out of that grave.
I needed a rescue, my sin was heavy, but chains break at the weight of your glory. I was, I needed shelter, I was an orphan, but you called me a citizen of heaven. When I was broken, you were my healing, now your love is the air that I'm breathing. I have a future, my eyes are open, cause when you call my name, I ran out of that grave, hallelujah. Today, Jesus. I needed a rescue. My sin was heavy, but chains break at the weight of your glory. I needed shelter. I was an orphan, but you called me a citizen of heaven. When I was broken, you were my healing. Now your love is the air that I'm breathing. I have a future, my eyes are open. Cause when you call my name, I ran out of that grave. Out of the darkness, into your glorious day. Heaven. 
the saints and the elders in glorious song and the praises they sing never seem to get old then I'll stay here forever singing holy 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 Lord God Almighty over all you were you are you'll be forever the king enthroned in glory and splendor holy holy lord hallelujah Glorious, 
without anything else going on. If all over our houses, all over our living rooms, wherever you are at, if you could lift your hands up to the God of heaven and just allow his spirit to minister to you right now. Hallelujah, Jesus. God, thank you for your love. 
Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your resurrecting power. Oh, God. Thank you for the cross. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I can't get away from this, this old song. I won't try and sing the verses. I did not bring the piano here. But because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds my future. Life is worth the living just because he lives, because he lives, I can face tomorrow, because he lives. All fear is gone Because I know He holds My future The future He holds your future Now life is worth The living just because he lives. Oh, my, my goodness. I don't know about you, but I feel the presence of God. <clears throat> I feel the presence of God. <laughs> I feel the presence of God. I want to thank you all for being here this morning. I know trying to get everything set up and YouTube is now being used. Um, I'm going to say this publicly. I apologize. I could not find a webcam to make the YouTube stream um, more clear visually. So I'm working on getting that done. And then we'll have two really good platforms to use for our services, YouTube and Facebook. Um, again, Pastor wanted me to thank all of you now that we're into the service and more of you have joined on. Pastor wanted me to thank you all for your prayers and the fasting that is going on for his recovery. I did get a chance to speak with him on um, Friday evening, if I'm not mistaken, yes. It was Friday evening and he, ta he told me that while he was in the hospital, there were a couple times where he was not feeling at all. He hasn't been feeling well, but he told me, he said, I was feeling especially not well. And he said, I could feel, this is what pastor said, he said, I could physically feel the prayers of our church. He said he was just in this hospital room and he felt the prayers. It was like heat that went through his body. So church, your prayers are effective. Our prayers are working. God is healing. God is doing the miraculous. And I know that he is going to continue until our pastor is completely healed and restored. And I'm believing God that there's not going to be any side effects to this sickness whatsoever. I believe in the name of Jesus that pastor is going to be restored to full health even to before he was sick. I believe that with all my heart, with all my soul, and I feel the witness of the Holy Ghost as I say that, that he is going to recuperate and he is going to be better than he was before he got sick. In Jesus' name, I believe that with all my heart. 
And he also wanted me to thank you not only for your prayers and for the fasting. He wanted me to thank you for your faithfulness to our services and the faithfulness and giving of tithing and offering. I know that this is a very difficult time for many as jobs and most places are not really at full capacity and they're not. A lot of people are out of work right now. The pastor understands that. He understands that, but he wants to thank you for being faithful so that we could continue to operate as a church. To God be all the glory for your sacrifices. And I know that he is going to bless you because the Bible told us that if we would give according to his word, that he would rebuke the devourer for our sake. And he wanted me to thank you. I just saw a comment from many of you from uh, Brandon. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. With that being said about the giving, there are two ways to give at this moment. I should say two preferred ways. Uh, number, number one is the text to give. Um, the text to give is very, very simple to use. And I know this is taking a little bit, but we got to do the announcements. <laughs> text to give is very, very easy. The number for the text to give, I will post it later, but I'll give it to you now. It is, um, uh, trying to remember it real quick. Nine two five four hundred. One second. Please forgive me for this. I had it memorized earlier, and for some reason it is not working in my mind. So I'm going to go find it. 925-400-6856. Again, that number for text to give is 925-400-6856. Just a little bit of instruction for you. When you text, if you haven't been using that, the first time that you text that number, you will text the word give with the dollar sign and an amount next to it. Text that to it, it will send you a link. You click the link and that will give you the ability to set up your card information. Once you set up your card information, that will be the card that is on there unless you go back to that link and go in and change it. Um, here's some other instruction for you. You won't need to give that amount again. Once you set up your card and everything and you submit everything, that amount will be given. So don't text give with an amount unless you're wanting to give that amount. Thank you, Sister Bright, for putting that on there. <clears throat> here's... Just one more thing about that. Once you get everything set up, if you just text give, dollar sign, an amount with no preface or no designation, that goes straight to the tithe account. If you want to give toward a specific ministry, for example, youth, children's, building fund, general offering, music, you'll have to designate those. So you have to, you'll have to put give, dollar sign, amount, and then offering or youth music. So <laughs> that is how that works. So enough about the giving, except for one more thing, which I forgot, our church offices. Those are located on at 8425, 8425 Brentwood Boulevard. If you know Brentwood, our services, our services, our offices, are at the cross street of Oak and Brentwood Boulevard. If you're headed from Balfour towards Oak Street, our offices are at Oak Street and Brentwood Boulevard to the left-hand side. Those yellowish colored buildings. Suite A7. We're directly across the street from the Chevron. All right, enough about that. God is so good. If you do have a need, 
and you would like prayer for that need, whether it's for yourself or for somebody else, um, please comment below on whichever medium you are using, and we will make sure to keep those in prayer. Or if you'd like to send a message on Facebook, you are able to do that if you have a need. Amen. God is wonderful. He's great. I'm not going to take too much more of your time. I know it's Easter, and I know all of you have your families with you, or most of you have your families with you. If you don't, God is with you. And I know that he is going to do something for you today. <laughs> so with that being said, let's pray one more time. Lord Jesus, I pray that you would have your way in this service, God. I pray, Lord, for every person that is under the sound of my voice. Lord, that they would experience your resurrection here today. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you have your Bibles, which we're all at home, so please get your Bible out. I'll give about 30 seconds for everyone to get their Bible out. Maybe a minute. And turn to Matthew chapter 28. Closest to... Oh, thank you, Jesus. Matthew chapter 28. We're going to read that whole chapter. It's only 20 verses and I can read fast. <laughs> Everyone got it? Matthew chapter 28. I'm going to go ahead and begin reading. In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher, or the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came, rolled back the stone from the door, and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning, and his raiment white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. And the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not, fear not, for I know that ye seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. I'm sorry, that makes me happy. <laughs> Let me read that one more time. Verse 5, 6, and 7. And the angel of the Lord answered and said unto the women, Fear not, for I know that ye seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen as he said. Come, see the place where the Lord lay. Then he tells them something else. And go quickly and tell his disciples that he is raised from the dead. And behold, he goeth forth, he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall ye see him. Lo, I have told you. And they departed quickly from the sepulchre with fear and great and great joy, and did run to bring his disciples word. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them, saying, All hail. <laughs> and they killed and they came and held him by the feet, and worshipped him. And Jesus said unto them, Be not afraid. It's two times. Be not afraid. Go tell my brethren that they go into Galilee, and there they shall see me. Now when they were going, behold, some of the watch came into the city and showed unto the chief priests all the things that were done. The watch there is talking about the guards that were set at the tomb 
to make sure no one came there and tried to steal the body. And when, the pre and when they were assembled with the elders and had taken counsel and gave large money unto the soldiers, saying, Say ye, his disciples came by night and stole him away while he slept. And if this come to the governor's ears, we will persuade him and secure you. So they took the money and did as they were taught. And this saying is commonly reported among the Jews until this day. Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Now I got a lot of scripture here today. We're going to go to Isaiah 53. Isaiah chapter 53. This chapter is describing Jesus. Isaiah 53. And as a matter of fact, I was watching on YouTube a video of a Hebrew, a Messianic Jew, who is going around in Israel and asking him, them if they have ever read Isaiah chapter 53. I will, I will look for that video and I will share it on our pages. But it's a very, very shocking thing that a lot of the Jews, especially the religious Jews in Israel, do not have this chapter in their book. Isaiah chapter 53. Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of a dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem, esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. If that doesn't sound like what happened to Jesus, I don't know what does. <laughs> the Jews, they didn't think there was really anything special about Jesus based on his appearance. They rejected him, a lot of them. They crucified him. Here we go. They can, we did not, we, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. Verse 5. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord hath laid upon him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before the shearers is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment, and who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death. Because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. 
Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hands. He shall see the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteousness shall my righteous servant justify many. We're going to go to the New Testament in a minute to talk about that. He shall see the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he hath poured out his soul unto death. And he was numbered with the transgression, transgressors, and he bare the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. Now I'm just going to stop here and just kind of explain a little bit of what all that's talking about. Matthew 28 is the story of the resurrection. We're here to celebrate the resurrection, but we cannot talk about the, regi- the, the resurrection without talking about the death of Christ. Now, I know a lot of people don't like to talk so much about the death of Christ. They don't like to talk so much about how bloody it was. They don't like to talk about how he was beaten beyond recognition. There are even churches now that don't sing songs about the blood because they're afraid it's going to offend people. But we cannot celebrate a resurrection if there was not a death. And the reason for that death was just laid out in Isaiah long before Jesus ever walked the earth. Isaiah prophesied that there was going to be someone here on earth that was sent from God to carry our iniquities. Now we as Christians know that a man by himself cannot carry iniquity for another. We cannot forgive sin for anybody. We can't carry, we can't pay the price for sin for anybody else. That's not how this works. We know as Christians that only God can forgive sin and that only God can make a sacrifice or tell us what sacrifice can be made for sin. And in the New Testament, which we'll get to later, he tells us what that sacrifice was, the cross of Calvary. In Isaiah 53, which we just read, talking about Jesus, it said that the Lord has laid our iniquity on him. Jesus carried our iniquity to the cross. If you don't know what iniquity is, iniquity is a little bit deeper of a word than just sin. To sin means to miss the mark. But iniquity means, basically speaking, wickedness. Things that we knew were wrong. He laid those on Jesus. It pleased the Lord to bruise him. It said that he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. Only Jesus could accomplish that. Only God in flesh could accomplish the work of Calvary. This is why the Bible tells us in John 1, pastor says this all the time, that in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. Skip down to verse 14. And that Word became flesh. In other words, if you research it in the Greek, and I'm going to go ahead and tell it like pastor would, if you go back into the Greek and understand what that was talking about, It wasn't just talking only about the spoken word of God. It was talking about the plan or the blueprint of God and what he was going to design for salvation for the world. Jesus 
God from the foundation of the beginning of the world, not earth only, the world, universe, whatever world, whatever word you want to put there, cosmos. Some have translated it cosmos, the beginning of the universe. God in his foreknowledge knew that one day he would have to come down himself in a fleshly body. And he would have to pay the sacrifice for our sin in order to reconcile us back to himself. Jesus is that sacrifice. And that's why it's so important when we talk about Easter, we talk about the resurrection, that we understand that it is not just a celebration of a resurrection. Yes, we celebrate the resurrection. And Paul said it this way, Oh, that I might know him in the power of his resurrection and in the fellowship of his sufferings. I'll say it again. There would be no need of a resurrection had there not been a bloody, gruesome death. The cross was not a picture of beauty to the physical eye. The cross was a reproach. The cross was meant and reserved in Roman times for the worst of criminals. A death by crucifixion means that you were, in the eyes of the law, the worst of the worst. And even though Jesus had never sinned, Jesus had never said anything wrong. He'd never violated any, anything or anyone. He had never done anything to deserve a death. He was given the death of the cross because people, the Jewish people, were blinded to who he was. And it's because of that death on the cross that we have the shed blood of Jesus that is able to cover us from our sin, is able to wash us and cleanse us from our sins. I told you I have a lot of scripture here today. Just to give you a, a, a quick description of one of the things that amazes me about the, the story of the resurrection and the cross is that the moment, we sang about it earlier in one of the songs about the veil being torn, actually in two of the songs, the veil being torn. When Jesus died and he gave up the ghost, immediately, because the sacrifice for sin had been paid, man was now granted access to the throne room of God. We were now given access to the Spirit of God by the veil tearing in the temple from top to bottom. It's, it, it broke the barrier between God and man. It broke the barrier that sin had set up that kept us away and out of the presence of God Almighty. And what once was only reserved for the high priest, now we are able to experience here today. I'm going to go to Romans chapter 5. This is going to be a lengthy reading. I'm not asking anyone to stand. told you I'd have a lot of scripture here today because we're talking about the resurrection and I just had to talk about the cross for a little bit. Romans chapter 5 beginning at verse 1. Therefore being justified by faith we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ by whom we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Mm. I need to read those two again. Therefore being justified. How are you justified? 
How are we justified? By the blood of Jesus. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. By whom? By Jesus Christ. We have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also. Knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope. And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. For when we were yet without strength, Oh my, oh, for when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. That's you and I. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet peradventure for a good man, some would even dare die. Okay, let me just break that into everyday English. Basically what it's saying says, for when we were yet without strength, in due time or in the proper season, Christ died for the ungodly. Because it's a rare thing that someone would even die for a righteous man. And a good man, maybe someone would die for him. But God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners... Christ died for us. When we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than now being justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Now, I don't know about you, but that gives me a lot of hope. I just sang it. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Not only tomorrow, but because he lives. The Bible said this in Romans chapter 5, verse 10. For if we, for if when we were enemies, God reconciled us to himself by the death of his son. How much more, or much more, being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. <laughs> mm. The only way to be saved by his life, if he already died, is for there to have been a resurrection. Mm. That makes me so happy. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. What is the atonement? The cleansing. The way to purify ourselves from sin. Now we know that we can't do anything to purify ourselves from sin, but God gave us the way to do that. That is repentance. That is baptism in Jesus' name and making sure that we are applying the blood of Christ to our lives so when things start coming against us and that pestilence and the death angel comes through, we have the blood applied to our lives and it has no hold on us. By whom we have now received the atonement, death in Adam, life in Christ. Now that's not scripture, that's a subset of this chapter. Okay, now we're going to talk about something else. Where, no, not something else. You know what I mean. Wherefore, as by one man sin into the world and death by sin, so death passed upon all men, for all have sinned. It can't get much more plain than this. Sin came in, brought death. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. Skipping all the way down.
to verse 15. But not as the offense, so also as the free gift. For if through the offense of many be dead, of one many be dead, much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, hath abounded to many. And not as it was that one sin, by one that sinned, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one to condemnation, but the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. Now someone might be questioning, what does that mean? That saying, that by one man's sin, basically, death entered the world. We're talking about Adam all the way in the beginning. But through Jesus Christ, we are able to obtain justification for many offenses. The free gift is of many offenses under justification. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one. Jesus Christ. Therefore, as by the offense of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so by the righteousness of one is the, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one Jesus Christ, to the plan of God in the beginning. Remember in the garden he prayed, Father, not my will, but thine be done. Yeah, he had to submit himself to the plan. The, the fleshly part of him had to submit himself, which is why the Bible says that he was obedient to the death of the cross. Jesus didn't have... You ever heard that, that saying that a lot of people say he didn't have to do it, but he did? That's so very true. Jesus was God in flesh. He did not have to become obedient to death. He could have just said, okay, get as close as you want, but I'm not going to let you kill me. But he didn't do that because he realized in order for justification to happen, in order for reconciliation to happen, in order for any type of salvation to happen, I have to be obedient to the plan that I set forth from the beginning. For as by one man's disobedience were many made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Colossians chapter 1. Start at verse 15. Colossians chapter 1 verses 15. Speaking of Jesus who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things and by him all things consist. He is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him, that in him, him should all fullness dwell. And having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things to himself. By him, I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven, and you that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled <laughs> in the body of his flesh through death to present you <clears throat> holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. If ye continue in the faith grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which ye have heard, and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, wherefore I, Paul, am made a minister. Remember the first scripture that we read earlier said you have peace with God through Jesus Christ? Here it is said again, Colossians 1.20, And having made peace through the blood of his cross, we need the blood of Jesus. 
by him to reconcile all things unto himself, I say whether be things in earth or things in heaven. Now I talked, I read all of this scripture simply because we have to understand that it is through the blood of the cross that we find atonement. I know we know this as Christians. I know that we know this, but it doesn't ever hurt to hear it again. We find atonement and we find peace with God through the blood of the cross of Christ. It is only through the sacrifice of Calvary that we find peace with God. It is only when His blood is applied to our lives that we are able to reflect His glory. It is only when His blood is applied to our life that we are able to find forgiveness. It is only through the blood of His cross that we are able to operate and have forgiveness and access to Him through faith. Without the cross, there would be nothing to believe in. I know that's a strong statement, but without the cross, there would be no resurrection. If there was no resurrection, we would not be having peace with God. We would still be under the old law where Gentiles were not really accepted. Now, I, I meant to go a completely different way with this today, and I'll get to that. But I just, I want us to understand here today how important the blood of Jesus is. If you have not applied the blood of Jesus to your life, you need to do that today. You need to ask him to forgive you. You need to call on the name of the Lord. You need to ask him to cover you in his blood. Ask him to remove the sin from your life. Ask him to forgive you, and he will. Now, in a lot of these scriptures we heard, and I'm almost done. We heard two words or a phrase that kept coming up. Fear not. Don't be afraid. We hear that a lot. Jesus is risen. Okay? Because he lives, we can face anything. Now I know this is the direction that I, I felt to go. and I, It took me a while to get here. That's okay. But one of man's greatest fears on earth is death. It's one of the greatest fears that people have. They fear death. They fear the unknown. They fear not knowing when their time is going to be up. They fear all of these things. But Jesus said that we don't have to fear these things because his resurrection power lives inside of us. Here we go. We're going to go to Romans chapter 8, verse 11. Now I know this is talking, a lot of times this is used in, for the rapture. I, I know that. I'm trying not to take it out of context, but I need to apply it to here today. Romans chapter 8, beginning of verse 11. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead lives or dwells in you. Let's just explain that in everyday English. If you have the Holy Ghost, Jesus said it over and over. I don't do these works by myself. It's my Father who lives in me. In several instances throughout the scripture, it says that Jesus did these things by the Holy Spirit. So if you have the Holy Ghost, so here, 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 let me paraphrase it. This is the KWS version. <laughs> But if the Holy Spirit that raised up Jesus from the dead lives in you, He, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by His Spirit that dwelleth in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh. Who thank you, Jesus. To live after the flesh. For if you live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if through, but if ye through the Spirit 
do mortify or kill the deeds of the body, you shall live. For as many are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father, the Spirit itself making intercession. Remember how in a couple chapters ago when we read it said that Jesus makes intercession for many? Hello? Here we are. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we, that we may be also glorified together. All I came to tell you here today is that you and I, have no reason to fear the unknown. We have no reason to fear death. We have no reason to fear sickness. Why? Because the blood of Jesus and the resurrecting power of Jesus has all authority. It has all power. It has all dominion. It has all strength. And there is nothing that can conquer our risen Savior. When Jesus died... He went down into hell, whether you believe it or not. I don't have time to read it to you here. But when Jesus died during those three days, he went down into the belly of hell. The Bible says it. He went down into the belly of hell and it said that he led captivity captive. Now I'm just going to tell you what, what I understand that to mean. Jesus went down into hell and he took prisoner all of the spirits that would try and come and take us captive. Those things are all subject to the power of Jesus Christ. All sickness, all disease, all addiction, all things are placed under his feet. He is the firstborn of every creature and he is everything. Because he is alive and because his spirit dwells in me, because he lives in me and because he lives in you, you are able to be the church, the children of the living God. You are able to walk into any situation and where there is not peace because you show up, you can bring peace. Why? Because you have the resurrected Savior living on the inside of you and flowing everywhere that you go if you follow the Spirit of God. The Bible says that I know that this is not your typical Easter message. Oh, well, we know that God is alive and because he lives and not only does he live, it's not like he's just alive out somewhere in the universe just sitting around doing nothing because he lives and he is still working and he is still providing and he is still operating through us, the body of Christ, because he is alive in us. We are able to change the situations that we are in today. Death could not hold him, and death cannot hold you. Death cannot hold him, it could not hold him. Death had nothing in him, Satan had nothing in him. That's why the Bible, Jesus said it. There was no guile in him. There was no fault. There's nothing in him that was fake or false. But he lives in me. And because I am justified by the cross of Calvary. And I am sanctified by the blood of Jesus. And his spirit dwells on the inside of me. There is nothing that I and you cannot conquer. Man, I feel like preaching that today. There is nothing that we cannot conquer. We are not debtors to this flesh. We are not debtor to this world. We are not debtors to this society. We are not debtors to anything else. We are the servants and the children of God. But not only the servants and the children of God, we are joint heirs with Christ. 
Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ in me, the hope of glory. Christ in us, the church, the hope of glory. We are the hope that people are needing in this hour. We, the church, the children of the living God, we are the hope. Why? Not because we're God, but we are his representatives. The Bible calls us ambassadors of Christ. Woo! Jesus, the Bible calls us ambassadors of Christ. We are the representation of Jesus Christ here on this earth. Now, oh man, I'm, uh, this then turned into a totally different message. Yeah, I'm thankful for the resurrection. I'm thankful for the cross. I, I'm thankful for the blood of Jesus. I am, and I'm not meaning to downplay that at all. It's only because of the cross. It is only because of the resurrection that we have the ability, the ability to be the sons of God and the daughters of God. We are the church, the children of God, the heirs with Christ. I don't know what that does to you, but that makes me excited because that lets me know that I'm not just anybody. And it should let you know as well, you are not just anybody. You're not just a person here on earth that doesn't have a purpose. You're not just someone who's wandering around aimlessly as if, oh, just got to make it through the day. No, you are have the ability through the blood of Jesus and through the spirit of the resurrected Christ to do the impossible. Yes, I said you can do the impossible. Why? Through Christ. Why? Because in Philippians it tells us that I can do all things through Christ who strengtheneth me. And guess what? I'm going to tell you something real quick. Oh, I told you I was almost over and I will be. Give me five minutes, five or six. Jesus, even before the Holy Ghost was given, gave his disciples dominion over things like sickness and demonic spirits. We have the authority. Just like Paul, just like Peter, just like James and John. We have the authority of Christ. Why? Because we are filled with his spirit and we are justified by his blood and we now have access to the throne of God because the veil has been torn and now we have his spirit living inside of us and if we have his spirit on the inside of us nothing nothing can conquer us Lord Jesus I thank you today I thank you for your blood. I thank you for the victory that you promised us. I thank you, O oh God, that you said that we can become, that we are more than conquerors through you who loved us. We thank you because we are the children of God, because we received your spirit. And by that spirit, we cry, Abba, Father. We now have access and the availability to call you our Father, because we are your children through the Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. I hope you've been encouraged by this. I want you to have a wonderful rest of this Easter Sunday with your families. I know many of you have probably special meals prepared. God is in control. We are his children. And we have the promise of victory if we will just believe and follow him. Please remember to be faithful in your giving. And those of you who have been, God bless you. Those of you, if you have not been able to give, you can contact me, leave a message um, on Facebook. We will tell you how to give. Again, there are two ways, text to give and dropping off at the office. I will post on Facebook those options again. Um, God bless you. Please remember to pray for Pastor every day until he is completely recuperated. I will do my best to keep you updated on what is going on. Um, and I want to thank you for bearing with me 
and for giving me the honor to minister to you, such a wonderful church. I love you in the Holy Ghost. I love you in Christ. You're my brothers and my sisters, and I appreciate you so very much. May God bless you and may God keep you. Have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful rest of today. In Jesus' name.